Hello everyone, my name is Rob and I'm a postdoctoral researcher based in Vienna, Austria. If you're like me, air travel sometimes causes you some discomfort while you're in the air. For me this means lightheadedness, a headache and some nausea. In this video I'll explain why that might be. I will share some of the measurements I did while I was in the air that will help explain how your body responds to flying. And I'll go into the science behind this. Specifically, I'll focus on the decreased air pressure in the cabin and how that influences the amount of oxygen in your blood. What I found is that the amount of oxygen in my blood is reduced to a level where normally in the hospital sick people would get extra oxygen. Now, an airplane cabin is different from a normal room in many ways. First of all, the air is much drier. You tend to sit in this cramped position for prolonged periods of time. And finally, the air pressure is much lower. Now, all of these could contribute to you feeling worse in an airplane cabin than on the ground. But today, I want to specifically focus on air pressure. Air pressure is much lower in an airplane. It's at about 75% of normal, which is the equivalent of being at 8,000 feet or 2500 meters, which is about halfway up Mount Kilimanjaro. And as we all know, the higher you go on Earth, the thinner the air and the lower the air pressure. Of course, an airplane flies much higher than 8000 feet. And the cabin is actually intentionally pressurized at 8000 feet. Because if the pressure inside the airplane would be the same as outside, it would be too dangerous for people. The air would simply be too thin, there would be too little oxygen to breathe. So why don't they pressurize airplanes to the same air pressure as we have on ground level? Well, it would simply be too expensive. Because the greater the pressure difference between inside and outside the airplane, the stronger the airplane has to be. And the stronger the airplane, the heavier the airplane. Which means they can fly fewer passengers and have to use more fuel. However, this lower air pressure does have consequences. It means that the total amount of oxygen in the air is at about 75% of normal. Which in turn means that your body has more trouble absorbing enough oxygen. This leads to a lower amount of oxygen in your blood or a decreased blood oxygen saturation. Now to explain oxygen saturation in a bit more detail, it is basically the fraction of your red blood cells that contains oxygen. And typically this value should be between 95 and 100%, which means that between 95 and 100% of your red blood cells are oxygen saturated, so they contain oxygen. If your blood oxygen saturation gets really low, you could experience symptoms like shortness of breath, chest pain, confusion, a headache and a rapid heartbeat. And sometimes people experience these symptoms when climbing a mountain because the air pressure gets really low and this is known as altitude sickness. So I wanted to know if the lower air pressure in an airplane, so the lower oxygen content, actually affects my blood oxygen saturation. Because this could be the explanation for why I experience so much discomfort when flying. So for about 10 flights, I recorded both the air pressure in the cabin and my blood oxygen saturation to see if these things correlate. You can measure your oxygen saturation with one of these oxygen saturation monitors that you put on your finger. Now to make sure that results were valid, I actually used two different oxygen saturation monitors. So let's have a look at an example flight. So in this figure, we actually have two plots. On top, you see the air pressure in the cabin of the airplane over time. And on the bottom, we see the oxygen saturation in my blood over time. So this I measured with a blood oxygen saturation monitor that I had on my finger the whole time. Now, it was a relatively short flight, about an hour and a half, two hours from Amsterdam to Bucharest, Romania. But you can still see that as the airplane rose, there was a quick decrease in pressure over time in the airplane cabin to about 78, 79 kilopascals and later reduced to about 75 kilopascals where normally at ground level we would have about 100 kilopascals. So this also means there's about 75% to 80% of the oxygen in the air there would normally be. And you can see my oxygen saturation, which is normally at about 98, 99%, quickly follows this pattern in air pressure reduction. So it goes from about 98% here to about 94, 93% when the pressure is really low. So you see there's a really quick decrease and 93% is actually the point where people in the hospital when they're sick would get extra oxygen. Now, of course, I'm healthy, so this wasn't an issue for me, but you can see that there's a big impact of air pressure on your oxygen saturation. Now, here we have another flight, a relatively short flight again, 
And as you can see, when we were on the ground still, my oxygen saturation was stable at about 98%. But the moment we lift off and the air pressure in the cabin decreases, my oxygen saturation also decreased. And in this case, it decreased to about 91%, which is pretty low. Now here we have another flight where I only recorded the beginning of the flight. But as you can see, when we were still on the ground, my oxygen saturation was stable at about 97, 98%. And the moment we go into the air and the air pressure decreases, also my oxygen in my blood decreases. Now here we have another flight, and again we see that as the air pressure decreases, my oxygen saturation decreases. Now next, let's make a plot of the air pressure against the oxygen saturation. And that's what I've plotted here. So on the horizontal x-axis here, we have the air pressure in the airplane cabin, which on the ground would be around 100 kilopascals. Whereas on the y-axis, we have my oxygen saturation, which at ground level is normally for me personally, around 97, 98%, which is also what we see here. But we can clearly see that as the air pressure decreases, my oxygen content decreases with it. And it's a really nice line that we can plot through it. So far, we've been looking at air pressure in the cabin of the airplane against my oxygen saturation in my blood. But of course, we can translate this air pressure into amount of oxygen in the air. So here we see the plot that we saw before. So air pressure against oxygen saturation but we can actually translate this to percentage of oxygen in the air and we see of course a very similar relationship but maybe even more interesting we can plot a virtual altitude now what I've done here is I've translated the air pressure in the cabin to the equivalent altitude that you would have on earth to get the same air pressure and what you can see is that as the basically virtual altitude goes up the oxygen saturation in my blood goes down and it peaks at about 2500 meters about 8000 feet which is what most airplane cabins are set to. And we can also plot this against each other so as basically the equivalent altitude of the cabin goes up, my blood oxygen saturation goes down. And of course, again, we see this really nice relationship between the two, where at about 2,500 meters or 8,000 feet, I decrease to about 92, 93% oxygen saturation. And as I mentioned before, if you were sick and in the hospital and you would have a blood oxygen saturation of about 92, 93%, there's a big chance they would give you extra oxygen. But for a healthy person, this should not be a major issue, but it might cause some discomfort. We can clearly see there's a big effect of air pressure on my blood oxygen saturation. The question is, is this also the main reason I experience discomfort during flight? Or are there other reasons that contribute as well? Preferably, I'd like to look at the effect of air pressure separately from the other things that are different in an airplane, like the decreased humidity or the lack of leg room. Luckily, a cool study published in one of the best scientific journals called The Lancet actually looked at this. Now, in this study, they used a hyperbaric chamber, so basically a chamber where you can adjust the air pressure as you wish, to look at the effects of air pressure on the body. They had 502 participants go into this chamber for 20 hours at different pressures to see what the effects were on the human body. In this study, they found that headaches, lightheadedness, shortness of breath, backache and impaired coordination were the main symptoms of discomfort when decreasing air pressure. What I found most interesting was that these symptoms were most apparent at 7 or 8,000 feet, whereas if they reduced the air pressure to that what you would have at 6,000 feet, these symptoms were greatly reduced. Setting the air pressure at the equivalent of 8,000 feet was actually determined based on studies from the 70s and 80s, and from what I could find this hasn't been revised since. Now this newer study actually suggests it would be better to increase the air pressure to the equivalent of 6,000 feet because it would greatly reduce the discomfort of passengers. So far I mostly mentioned discomfort, but are there also more serious consequences of this lower oxygen content in an airplane? Well, for most healthy people it won't be an issue, but if you have some chronic condition where your blood oxygen saturation is already lowered, it could become an issue. As you can see in this plot from a scientific paper, Patients with chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, or COPD, already have lower oxygen saturation to start with, and they can have dangerously low oxygen content during flight. So the red line here is the people with COPD. People with COPD are therefore recommended to have supplemental oxygen during a flight. Now, how about COVID-19 infected people? Well, of course, anybody with symptoms pointing towards COVID-19 infection should not be flying at all. But if we speculate, of course, COVID-19 affects the lungs. So flying could be dangerous if you have a serious COVID-19 infection. So to summarize, due to reduced air pressure, the amount of oxygen in an airplane is at about 75% of normal. This can in turn lead to reduced oxygen saturation of your blood, which can result in headaches, lightheadedness, shortness of breath, backache, and impaired coordination.
So the reduced air pressure in an airplane is likely one of the main reasons that we experience discomfort while flying. And studies have shown that some people have even further reductions in their blood oxygen saturation than I do. Of course, other factors can contribute as well, like the dry air in an airplane or the fact that we have to sit in this cramped position for a long period of time. But for me personally, I suspect that the lower blood oxygen saturation as a result of this reduced air pressure is the main reason I experience discomfort while flying. Thanks for watching. So do you experience any discomfort while flying and why do you think this is? Well, let us know in the comments below. Also, if you like this video, please consider subscribing and giving it a thumbs up. If you like, subscribe or comment, the YouTube algorithm does fancy stuff and shows my videos to more people. But of course, it's totally up to you. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and see you in the next video.